I think it was intentional, and I don't think it was. Oh, oh down goes Jacobs oh. on a perfect right hand. Right on top. And that Just one. Just, Just one. one. Rest of you clear. Okay. You had your instructions in the dressing room. The only thing I'm going to remind you of now is when I tell you stop, what that means is stop whatever you're doing. Give me a clean break. Protect yourself at all times. Obey my commands at all times. Let's do this. Did a middleweight title belt because the governing body, which is supplying that belt, stripped it from Sergio Martinez just a few weeks after Martinez beat up Kelly Pavlik to clearly become the number one middleweight and the legitimate middleweight champion of the world. So it's preposterous that there's a belt on display here for competition, but it's no insult to either of the two fighters. They're both excellent young men and excellent fighters, either of whom could have a terrific career in the sport, either of whom could conceivably someday be a legitimate middleweight champion. But to call them now, uh, call one of them that, that now is absurd. Well, right away you saw Daddy Jacobs come by and try to land a big right hand, which was a good move. But as I'm studying his face, I think in his pressure, I think he's developed a little respect for Dimitri at this point. And he's realizing that his upper body movement, his head movement, is going to create a slight problem because it's whoa, whoa, not whoa, whoa, that easy. In his time. Look at that. Very, very relaxed. Danny Jacobs fighting in a southpaw stance now. He's Danny, seen it a couple of times. Well, Danny, you can look, he's trying to find himself right now. He's, he's not having the success he expected as easy. And so he's trying to make adjustments right now, which is a very smart thing to do. He landed the straight left hand out of his southpaw stance he's trying to and find, stays yeah, in it. What's going to work for him is what he's trying to find out now. Herod momentarily switched southpaw to throw that left hand. Now Jake Jacobs goes back to his conventional stance. This is the way they'll match up against each other most of the night. Shops. Good right hand by Perot. Jacobs kind of leaned into it for him. Jacobs still has not found a way really to effectively land punches on Parag. Parag's upper body movement is, is really creating a problem for him. Just to know whether Daniel Jacobs is a New York football Giants fan or whether his cornermen have simply found out it's extremely convenient that they can buy jerseys <laughs> with big New York logos all over them that say Jacobs on the back. Number 27, Brandon Jacobs, the running back for the Giants. Pick him up. Uh, Danny Jacobs has a very good train in his corner in Victor Roundtree. Very, very good. I was going to say, but right he's hand by Perot. Jacobs was, almost went down. I was going to say, but he's going to have his hands full tonight trying to figure out a victory strategy for Jacobs tonight. That's a good body shot with a left hand by Perot. Right now, Perot's the aggressor earlier in the fight, and he landed a big right hand here in the second round that has Daniel Jacobs on the defensive. You were about to say that uh, Jacob's terrific trainer, Victor Roundtree. He's going to have his hands full tonight. Yep. Trying to put a part of strategy. Because I know they were not expecting this type of a fight from Perot. Perot is a very, very good fighter. Yeah, is he relaxed enough on this stage? Very It's relaxed. like he lives in Vegas. I, I was, yeah, especially being that it's his first time fighting here. But you say he's made quite a few trips here attending fights. Says and he's train, only been here a week. Says yeah. he didn't take that all that easily to American food. Didn't go to the Russian restaurant here in the hotel because that wasn't really Russian food to him. He's beating Jacobs up in this round. When I was, you know, I'm a very big fan of Danny Jacobs, and I was talking to my boxer, Millerweight, Andy Lee, about this fight. He says, Danny's going to have his hands for the man. Andy says, this guy may not look that much, but he's a very difficult guy to fight because he'd been studying him, I guess, being from Europe himself. The once unbeaten Andy Lee, another very skilled middleweight, still trying to recover from the unexpected loss that derailed his career it's tough and by the way he did have a knockout last night he fought last night so. and he's won several fights yeah, yeah but he's still trying to get a key fight so and things look very good for him for the first quarter of next year 
You know, there's an improvisational quality to what Pirog does, and Daniel doesn't seem really prepared for it. No, no, it's not. I think they figured a much head, easier Pierre. fight. Pirog does say that you really have to look very closely as a real good boxing guy to really study and see what he's doing. But as I said, he moves his head in and out, changes, gives you angles, changes him, and punches from those pivots. He's pivoting and turning and punching at the same time. After looking at him on videotape, break, break. I said to a couple of writers that he reminded me of a younger, push, slightly push. bigger Javier Castillejo. Remember Castillejo of Spain? Yes. Yep. Fought against Vargas, fought against Del Hoya, etc. Castillejo was long armed, more conventional than Perot. No, this is a better fighter than Obviously. Yeah, I That's what I was about to say. Yeah, it's he, clear now yeah. he's better. Uh, he's, yeah, I can see the, the, uh, the, the Ray Leonard moves a lot. Not as fast in the front row, but he twists and pivots, changes his angles. But he's a pressure fighter, which is amazing. Stop, stop, stop. He moves his head yeah. very well inside. Yep. Perogue landing punches. And I think the biggest problem that Jacobs had, he didn't know where they was coming from because it's such a different variety of punches. And the right hand here was a great shot, but he didn't actually get, get a knockdown score against him simply because his gloves, uh, his body never touched the canvas. I disagree with Emmanuel Stewart. That should have been a knockdown. Those ropes were holding this guy up. The guy went into the ropes. And, and, you know, if the ropes weren't there, Danny Jacobs would have been on his back. And therefore, Robert Bird should have given him a mandatory eight count. Robert Bird gave him a break on that call. He, he definitely was caught up in those ropes. Be as it may, Danny Jacobs probably pulled out the first round with good, you know, strong right hands. Perot beat the heck out of him in the second round. One round apiece. CompuBox numbers favored Jacobs in round one. CompuBox numbers clearly favored Perot in round two, as you might expect. I didn't see the ropes holding. He was bending forward. I think it was that. a pretty close he call. Was bend, he was bending forward when he, when, he, when he regained his balance. And not that he was back in the ropes holding where he would have fell out of the ropes. I was watching so, his so butt I, I on the replay looking for exactly that. And I think his butt was just in front of the rope instead of on it. But yeah, it was a very close call. Certainly, Bird wouldn't have been criticized if he had given the eight count. I think the more important problem is Danny Jacobs trying to figure out the movements and the pressure that's being applied to him from all angles. Well, he agreed right. with his cornerman that he can't be backed up against the ropes, that the ropes are not a good place. But Pirog has him against the ropes again. And now there's a look of concern on Jacobs' face that shows you that there are mysteries in there for him which I saw need that, to be uh, solved. I saw that look after the first 30 seconds. Yeah, you did. Yeah, and so he was having problems hitting him, not like they had rehearsed and, 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 and planned. So, you know, you just have to make adjustments if you can. You realize he's got a very talented fighter and start boxing different. Do a lot of fainting before he punches to make him move first and then hit him. You know, just because Perot did not star in the Russian amateur program and go to the Olympics and earn the kind of profile that several Russian fighters have gotten from their Olympic action, a lot of people might have thought, oh, maybe he's not as good as those other guys. Maybe he's better. Yep. because he has trained himself into a more American style. Watching the tapes of Floyd Mayweather Jr. Yeah, Look really at little. the head movement there. <laughs> Definitely not European fighter, so maybe his style wasn't uh, really compatible with what their scoring system was over there, neither. You're fighting somebody from Russia, if you're looking for that stolid, stand-up, stationary style, not here. This guy is a mover. Well, what's interesting to me is the pressure that he's putting on, and, and Danny's doing good right now, but I don't know the, the pressure that he's putting on Danny. He's making Danny fight and move a lot faster than I think Danny wants to. Right hand by Jacobs. Got to land with two punches, even if you hit him with one punch. Right here, you see Jacobs in a beautiful, clean right hand, probably the best punch he's landed tonight. And uh, that's what he's got to keep doing. And after he lands those punches, get away right away, move away. But he's going to have to be in great shape tonight because he's going to have pressure on him all night long. Harold Letterman gave Jacobs the round. That right hand helped to sort of even the score, given that Perogue has already landed three or four of those kinds of damaging shots with both the left and the right hands. Good body shot by Jacobs. Perogue leaned into that one. Copy box numbers in the third round favored Jacobs. 13 out of 75 and 6 of 48 for Perogue. 
Jacobs back in that southpaw stance. Seems to feel he maybe have has a better chance to land a power left hand out of this stance than out of his conventional stance, Emmanuel. Well, I, I still can't figure it out, but evidently he must feel more comfortable than that. But I haven't saw him land too much, except the first time he did it, he was able to land a loop in left hand. But other than that, he's not been that effective. But, um, you know, it, it, uh, it's a risky when you're fighting a guy with a great upper body movement that Perug had to be doing anything that's experimental, so to say. Rogue's got a little bit of showboat in him, too. Definitely not your regular. Talking to Jacobs in there. Jacobs hammering to the body. I don't suppose Rogue is speaking Russian to Jacobs. <laughs> You know, what surprised me, a lot of these guys, they speak a lot better English than they let you on to think most, because most of them had it standard in their school over there. They take it in yeah. first grade. Yeah, they, but they, they try to let you think that they don't speak, but they understand a lot of things when we're speaking to them. Well, that was always the old Soviet persona. I mean, during the days of Soviet Union control of sport in those countries, people who spoke perfect English were absolutely deaf and dumb when American reporters were around. Yeah, and as soon as you leave, then they start speaking. Rogue's hat is so elusive. I think if I were in Jacobs' corner, Emmanuel, I might beg him to focus on the body for a while. Yes. And then Jacobs has to try to throw his flurs and land and get away right away. But I just, I, I think that the fight's going to be fairly competitive to a certain degree, but I'm just worried about the condition of Jacobs going down the stretch. Because? Well, I don't think he's ever had this type of a pressure that's put on him. These guys come in in very difficult pressure, too. Not a straight line pressure. Well, Jacob's biggest win was in August oh, last year. Him, almost a year ago against E.J. Smith. E.J. Smith, much older than... This is something totally new to Jacobs right now, being hit with the punches that he's been hit with tonight, and then also an opponent that he can't seem to control and make an adjustment. That makes it sound as though Jacobs easily won the round. You can see that Harold gave it to Perot, who landed the more significant blow. So this is a this is a fight in which CompuBox, num CompuBox numbers may not give you as accurate a profile of what's happening as is normally the case because of what an unusual style Perot de demonstrates in the ring. Good comeback left hook by Jacobs there. What was that, Emmanuel? Uh, you know, he... <laughs> I, I think he just told him hit me low, but uh, not even you know, a big issue of it, which I think is good. Yeah, I didn't see yeah, anything no. really land low. It was low. It was low, but I don't think it was intentional, and I don't think it was... Oh, oh down goes Jacobs oh. on a perfect right hand. Right on top and of that may be oh. that. the count he waves his arms and Jacobs is gone on a stunning knockout by Perot well you said it Emmanuel he's never seen anything like the opponent with whom he was in there tonight and Dimitri Perot has just produced one of the shockers of the year well Andy Lee you was right Andy Lee Jorge Linares yep. it happens to a lot yeah. of the great prospects yep. Amir Khan. So add Daniel Jacobs to the list that includes Andy Lee, Amir Khan, and Jorge uh, Linares, whom you saw in the first fight tonight. Yeah. Can you come back from the shocking early knockout well, this, in your this developing was, career? Yeah, but this was a very, this guy was uh, fighting a good fight all the way through. He was, to me, although I saw the fight should have been close, I could see going down the stretch, I liked the way that Parag was looking. Do you suppose the governing body that stripped that title belt from Sergio Martinez, the legitimate middleweight champion of the world, and put it up for competition here, was hoping that Dmitry Perog would take it back to Galinchuk, Russia? No, I, I thought it was stolen with Danny Jacobs, I but doubt it. after seeing Perog... the right hand, and boom! Jacobs was asleep for five seconds. That was enough to convince Bird that it was over. 
just at the moment when Bird waved off the count, that's when Daniel looked up and seemed to say, wait a minute, I'm still here. But, alas, the knockout had already been scored. But look at the body movement of Peral coming in from all kind of angles, and not just his upper body, his footwork, his balance. It, it is it just very, very difficult to fight with a guy like him. What a cagey, scary yeah. athlete he is. Fights like an old veteran fighter. Daniel Zaragoza. From America, too. Daniel yeah. Zaragoza. He yeah. reminds me yeah. of Zaragoza in his improvisational style. All three judges had Jacobs up three rounds to one. Let's go to Michael Buffer for the particulars on the knockout.